This is a Fox News alert, a shocking verdict, frankly an inexplicable verdict in the Kate Steinle murder trial. A California jury has just found an illegal alien not guilty on all counts, three separate counts, potential counts of murder, except for illegal gun possession for which he was convicted. Fox's Claudia Cowan is live in San Francisco with all the latest details on this. Claudia? Well, Tucker, this jury deliberated almost uh, 30 hours, and there was growing uh, speculation among some of us who've been covering this case that it, there might be a, a deadlock jury, jury and a mistrial. But uh, soon uh, after they asked the judge to handle the gun that was used to kill Kate Steinle, just shortly after that, they reached a verdict. And as you mentioned, it is a shocking verdict. Not guilty of murder in the first or second degree. Not guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Not guilty of assault with a semi auto automatic weapon. So a big win for the public defender in this case. His name is Matt Gonzalez. Shortly after the verdict was read, he came out into the hallway to address the throng of reporters who have been uh, waiting uh, for this verdict to come down, or a verdict. And uh, he, he almost immediately uh, took aim at President Trump, saying uh, he's bracing for the tweets, but just wait. Listen to what he said. Those who might criticize this verdict, there are a number of people that have commented on this case in the last couple of years. The Attorney General of the United States, the President and Vice President of the United States. Let me just remind them that they are themselves under investigation uh, by a special prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and they may themselves soon avail themselves of the presumption of innocence and beyond a reasonable doubt standard. And reflect on that before they compare the result in this case. Matt Gonzalez came uh, directly over to talk to me uh, as soon as he left the Hall of Justice, and he said this is not a night uh, for celebrating by any means, but he said that uh, he feels that this jury reached the right verdict given the circumstantial evidence uh, that was brought into this trial. There was no testimony about uh, the defendant's criminal history or the fact that he was a multiple felon and deportee on track for his sixth deportation from the United States. The jury was not allowed to consider any of that. And uh, the defense really uh, uh, painted a case here that this was an unintentional discharge of a loaded weapon that happened to be on a, a popular tourist pier on July 1st, 15. And but for the ricochet of the bullet, Kate Steinle um, would still be alive. So the jury uh, clearly uh, pouring over a lot of evidence here to reach this verdict. It will be roundly attacked, Tucker, as we know. Uh, Matt Gonzalez says he doesn't care. So, uh, Claudia, you've been, you've been covering this. I just want to make sure we've got a couple of our facts right before we move into the analysis part of the program. So, this guy had seven felony convictions. He was a homeless, undocumented immigrant, as they say in San Francisco. He fired the gun three times. It was a stolen gun, and it went off three times. Um, and his initial explanation was he was shooting sea lions and then changed his explanation to say it went off accidentally three times. Is that, is that all right? No, Tucker. The, the, the gun was fired once. Uh, he gave conflicting statements to oh. police and the defense again uh, poked uh, holes in his uh, muddled confession to police because uh, uh, Zarate, Mr. Garcia Zarate, gave statements that were then clearly proven to be wrong or false. Uh, for instance, at one point he told police he, he went over to Kate Steinle, but surveillance video shows that that didn't happen. And uh, there were also issues taken with some of the police translations. So perhaps he didn't say he was shooting at sea lions. Uh, Matt Gonzalez uh, raised a reasonable doubt, certainly for this jury, but the gun only fired once. Now, after it fired, uh, Mr. Zarate kicked the gun into the water. Uh, the prosecution said that shows evidence of guilt. Uh, but uh, the defense said no. Uh, he kicked it into the water because it fired on its own, and he was scared, and he panicked, and so he kicked it in the water. So two totally different theories as to what happened. Uh, but yes, the gun only fired once. So so the gun was stolen from a federal agent out of a vehicle in downtown San Francisco. His contention was, Zarate's claim was, he found it somehow, somewhere? Yeah, uh, Mr. Zarate was never uh, charged with stealing that gun. That uh, was never a part of this case. It had been stolen from the parked car of a federal uh, BLM ranger four days earlier, not far from the pier. Uh, but yes, uh, Zarate's defense was that he, he was sitting on a bench, 
He looked down under the bench that was swiveling. He was swiveling on the, on the pier, and there was a, a bundle, uh, a rag, a T-shirt. And when he bent down to pick it up to see what it was, uh, the gun fired. Uh, and, and again, part of the defense was uh, the trigger pull on this 40 caliber six right. hour pistol was, was so light, just barely the, the barest amount of pressure would cause it to fire. Yeah, that's ridiculous, as any gun owner can, can uh, attest. The Claudia, thank you for that. I appreciate it, clearing that up. Well, we're at the reaction to this verdict. Mark Stein uh, joins us tonight. This, this does, I mean, it just reminds you of a verdict 20 years ago in a case that was equally politicized, the O.J. Uh, right. Simpson murder trial, where the defense attorneys made it a referendum on larger injustice in American society. I want to read you a quote from one of the lawyers uh, representing this man, in my view, is clearly a murderer, was just acquitted, uh, as we're reporting. He said, and I'm quoting now, this case is used to foment hate, division, and a program of mass deportation. So really, it sounds like this whole thing was recast as a political statement um, rather than a murder trial. So that, I mean, that's yeah, so kind of the end of justice, isn't it? I mean, if, tr if trials can be subverted by national politics, then, like, then there's no hope for justice, right? Well, I think it is a miscarriage of justice in the profoundest sense, in, in that Kate Steinle is dead uh, because she went for a walk in a popular destination in her own city, and her parents will never see anybody convicted for that crime. There's no dispute. I mean, this is slightly different from the O.J. case, where at least he pretended to be looking for the real killers uh, for the last 20 years. This, There's no dispute that this guy... Uh, actually fired the shot or uh, picked up the gun that then shot itself uh, and that this uh, the, this gunshot killed Kate Steinle and there's no dispute either that this man uh, should not have been in the country uh, that in fact he had been deported six times uh, and to go back to the old line you know about the jobs Americans won't do every society has a proportion of murderers uh, murder is a job that Americans will do just as Dutchmen will do or Slovenes will do you don't need to import foreigners to add to your murder population. No, this, you guy had a, this guy had a grade two education. Uh, we're told that the reason he got off is apparently because he's too stupid to understand what the cops were saying to him. Uh, so he gave conflicting uh, uh, answers about treading on the gun, finding the gun, uh, the firing at sea lions. He didn't understand. Why, why are we importing and why is one political party, the entire bureaucracy, and two-thirds of the remaining political party fetishizing and sentimentalizing uh, immigrants who can't speak the language with a grade two education and setting up competing jurisdictions in this country that protect them at the expense of American citizens. Right. Well, because they provide lower wages uh, and handy uh, voting blocks uh, for those parties. So, um, but there's a massive cost, as you're pointing out, and as our viewers, of course, are well aware, this case gave rise to, to Kate's Law, um, as you know, much debated. But the reason it did was because the San Francisco authorities let this guy go, even after being asked by the feds to hold him for deportation. Right. They refused. So I guess it all adds up to a picture of not just, you know, treating illegal immigrants as you would American citizens, but giving them, in effect, better treatment, special privileges, because they're here illegally. I, I don't know, I, I can't, it's very hard to imagine that an American citizen in Zarate's position would have been acquitted on all these charges. No, uh, th this is basically a lifelong career criminal uh, and the and the justification for letting him go is that there's no evidence of violent crime uh, just non-violent crime but the very term sanctuary city is designed to shut down the argument because who do you give sanctuary to you give sanctuary right. to refugees to those fleeing injustice uh, how can how how can there be something called a sanctuary city if it was uh, holding up a place for criminals to hold up. The very term is designed to shut down the debate. And the reason Donald Trump is president is because he declined to operate with, the, with those constraints. Uh, most of the other Republican nominees two years ago, the Jeb Bushes and Lindsey Grahams and all the rest of it, uh, were cowed by that kind of language, by no, Sanctuary totally. City Completely and all the rest of it. 
and, and Donald Trump, in fairness, recognize. I mean, I, I, I weep for Kate Steinle's parents tonight. I do not know how I could go on living in that city if, God forbid, uh, my daughter were to be shot by someone who uh, should never have been in the country in the first place yeah. and is actually being protected uh, by the entire bureaucracy, political media class of the country at the expense of American citizens. That's exactly right. Really quickly, I, it, it's hard to imagine now, but two years ago when this happened, um, the behavior of the city of San Francisco allowing this guy to go free in the face of requests from the feds to hold him, that was denounced by Hillary Clinton in the middle of the presidential race. Things have changed so much in two years in the Democratic Party. I wonder how many Democratic office holders will criticize his verdict tomorrow. Yeah, and if you remember, Bernie Sanders championed American citizens and American workers. It's right. not going to be that way in the 2020 campaign. They've moved just in two years. Pretty, pretty stunning. Mark Stein, thank you for that perspective. Thanks, Tucker.